Hi everyone, this is Eve from Urban Brain Studios. Um, I'm going to give you a brief tutorial on how to use the basics of Chat Mapper. So I've come up with a uh, basic story that I'm going to show you how to create the tree for. And the first thing I'm going to do is create the actors. So if you'll notice here, there are uh, two characters already built in. It's defaulted for any new project. We have new player and new NPC. New player will be the main character, the, the person that the player gets to play as. And over here on the properties panel, I can fill in the information for that character. So for me, my main character's name is going to be Charlene. Uh, I'll say she's age 26, gender female. And notice that this is player box is checked. That means that that's a playable character and most likely the main character. The next thing we're going to do is add the first NPC. And just like with the new player, I'm going to enter their name. This is going to be the village child. And I'm going to leave this unchecked to show that it's an NPC. To confirm the, the changes that I've made, just click outside the field and it's confirmed. You'll see the change uh, updates over here in the assets panel. To add new characters, just click this cog here, then new actor, and notice that something that's a lot like the properties panel just pops up automatically. That just makes it really easy to create new characters. So here's my second NPC. Click OK, and there we go. I have one more actor. And now we have everyone for my story. Um, other assets include items, locations, and variables. Before I go further, I want to make sure I name my conversation. So I click the Conversations tab up here. Then just like the assets, I click the item and then rename. Click outside. And there we have it. The next thing I'm going to do is build the tree. This area right here is where the tree is built. This is where I create my nodes, I map everything out. This, as we know now, is the assets and conversations panel. This is the conditions, script, and error list area. You can just click these tabs to see those things. This is the properties panel. We've already worked with that. And our overview. This is kind of like in, in other uh, image manipulation programs where you can drag around the box so you can navigate easily. The first thing I'm going to do is add an introduction node. That basically is going to present our problem. It's going to be the basis for the rest of the tree. Click this little green button here. And what I'm going to have is Charlene basically talking to herself. That's how she's going to present the problem to the player. So she'll say something like, I went ahead and filled in the text. And the menu text is what the player would see if there were menu options. But in this case, she's just thinking to herself, there's really nothing to click. So we're, we'll just leave it blank. Uh, over here is the title, and that's sort of for the writer, for me, the developer, whoever's creating the tree to keep track of which node is which. Uh, the actor is the person who's speaking, and the conversant is the person who's listening. And since Charlene's thinking to herself, she's both. So click OK, and there we have our first node. Very exciting. The second thing I'm going to do is create a group, and that's basically a reference point. So to create a group, I just Click this folder here, name it. For me, it's going to be called Action Decisions. Click outside to confirm. And uh, just something I like to do is, is to color code my group. So this area here are the highlighters. So I'll choose purple. And now from this point, I can create all my different branches. To do that, click the green button and I can start filling out my text and I'll do that right now. Okay, so I filled out all my information. I have my dialogue text. 
the menu text that the player will see in the simulator, uh, text for me to see within the dialogue tree, the person who's speaking, and the person who's listening. So click OK, and I have my first branch. Now, if I wanted to add a second part to this, I just click the green button, and notice that the actor and the conversant have switched. That's because Chat Mapper is expecting a response. So I'm just going to use these methods to fill out the rest of my four branches. OK, so now I've added my four different branches, the last one being the leave option. And it looks pretty good. But the problem here is, let's say the player clicks this node and then continues down the branch. What happens is there's nothing that tells the program to go back to the action decision group. So what I'll have to do is create a link. To do that, I click this link button. You can see this node is highlighted. And then click the node I want to link to. That tells Chat Mapper that when we get to this node and the player has clicked it, to go back to two, which is our group. So I'm going to go ahead and link the rest of them. I've gone ahead and I've linked the other dialog branches to our decision group. But since I want to be able to end the conversation at some point, I'm leaving my leave option with no link. The next thing I want to do is reorder my branches. Let's say I don't like the way it shows up in the simulator and I want uh, the order to change. Um, what I'll do is I right click the dialog node and click reorder node left or right. In this case I want to go to the left so there we go. And notice that the, the numbers remain the same so everything that's associated keeps its relationship. The next thing I want to do is add action tags and what that does is it makes it italics in the simulation. It, it just makes it look a little nicer. I'm just going to go ahead and add the A tag to the rest of the dialog nodes. So now in the simulation, these four options will appear in italics. Now let's simulate what we have. Here's our conversation. And notice the green bars here. These show um, all the valid, possible, clickable nodes that are in the simulation. Here's our four things. This is basically our decision group. We can press escape to toggle through them faster. Everything seems to be working, theoretically. And there we have it. So now let's go back to our tree. There were a couple problems with that simulation. For one thing, you could click each item endlessly. You can keep clicking midwife, keep clicking village child, and it doesn't stop until we click leave. But I don't want the player to be able to leave until they've gotten the information they need. For example, the village child is the character that tells the player where to go, and the protector is the person who gives the player the weapons to go on their journey. So we don't want the leave option to be available until those two conditions have been met. 